Justice really wanted because they wanted somebody who can um, win right away and show that right away. They're all about flash and style. And Mike Brown's a you know blue collar, put a lot of time behind the scenes working um, to get guys to play defense more than necessarily be great at offense. So I think that probably was the biggest factor, if you ask me. Uh, we were also talking about a little bit about this because I think I also heard a little bit about it on uh, ESPN that maybe they wanted to do it now, like they wanted to get it over with right now. That just in case if they ever got like into a, a very good stretch during, I think during their next stretch of games, their next stretch of six games, that I see them probably going like, well, they've already started off a little bit pretty well. Uh, that maybe that he could have won enough games to really save face. Um, my question for you is: Do you think that Mike Brown's probably? We we were talking a little bit about this early on the show. Do you think Mike Brown is going to you know have another have another job, or I mean, where do you think he's probably going to end up at, and which team do you think would be a uh, you know that would be good for him? Well, it's interesting because I honestly think that Mike Brown probably is going to take the rest of the year off mm-hmm. because um, he has two kids playing high school basketball out here, and I know that he really enjoys watching the play. So if I was him, I'd probably bet he's going to take the year off mm-hmm. just probably watch them because they're both seniors and, you know, enjoy, enjoy seeing you know, the rest of their careers before they go to college. Um, but as far as his next gig, I wouldn't be surprised if he had an assistant coach gig somewhere because I think by now, we see that um, while Mike Brown's a good coach, I think he's a little bit underrated mm-hmm. because he's been you know, forced out twice. I just think that he's probably better suited as an assistant coach to maybe you know help, help a team coach out their defense. Um, as far as a great fit, I'm not actually sure, but I think he would make a great defensive assistant. And Because uh, um, then he used to be an assistant with, uh, with Larry Brown in Detroit, I believe. I think so. I think I, I know he used to be an assistant in San Antonio as well. Right. So I mean, he came up in that you know Greg Popovich system, mm-hmm. and you know being an the coach, he'll find a job somewhere as an assistant. But I think as a head coach, I think right now he may be to get like a lower profile job where they don't have maybe you know the big name stars, so that he can kind of just you know see what he can do there. But I think he's still a good assistant. I mean, he knows defense very well, so. Mm-hmm. It'll be hard. It's hard to say where I think he'll end up, but I think whoever gets him after this year probably is going to get you know a very good assistant. Going to work hard. Well, let's switch outside of the Lakers for a minute now, and let's talk about some uh, some of the other NBA teams. Um, who has been your surprise so far this season um, for you? Uh, for you? Honestly, I didn't realize the Knicks were doing so well. Um, I saw that they started 4-0. I mean, I didn't expect the Knicks to be that good this year. Um, but they're looking really good. But obviously, like, well, Jeremy Lin turned out to be a great decision because now they have Raymond Felton running around there with Carmelo and company. I mean, that's – I mean, who knows what they're going to do. I mean, that Christmas Day game with the Lakers might even be better than I thought. But I think the Knicks definitely been surprised at 4-0. Um I heard you guys talk about Chicago at 4 2. I mean, I didn't expect it to be that well, but those two teams definitely are my biggest surprise right now as far as um, who I didn't expect to be well. Yeah, most definitely. And let's also talk about probably the other LA team, also the Clippers. I mean, they really have a deep team. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually saw, I saw the game against Portland. Um, and one thing I understand about the Clippers in LA. It's a Lakers town. Mm-hmm. Lakers first. And the Clippers have always been like the little brother because they haven't been great. So last year, you know, everyone was like, oh, the Clippers did well, you know, but let's see if doing it again this year. Well, they're doing it, man. They are deep. I got I to gotta say this. As, as a Laker fan, the Clippers look very, very, very good. I mean, Jamal Crawford might be the sixth man of the year. I mean, you got a guy who can give you 20 points off the bench who can score that easily against anybody. I mean, he's probably going to be, you know, I would be surprised if he finished in probably the top 20 in scoring off the bench just because he's that good. He's going to get that many shots. Um, I think Eric Bledsoe is also surprised off the bench for the Clippers. He's their backup point guard. Um, and if you remember, he backed up John Wall in Kentucky, 
and people were saying that he can start in any school in the country. So he's used to playing that back and forth right you know, when he comes in. But um, man, the Clippers look really good. I think Chris Paul is running that team so well. And if DeAndre Jordan can, you know, keep playing as well as he's doing, I mean, he looks like he has some kind of offensive game now. He's got a little jump hook. Um, he looks like he's made some progress. So I think, you know, they, they're going to be pretty good this year. I, I think that they're definitely going to show that last year wasn't a fluke. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised at how well they're playing. But, you know, that's what happens when I think you have the best player in the NBA running the show. Got anything else for him, Rob? Yeah, I just, I just read a report saying that Nate McMillan has been hired as the defensive specialist for the Lakers. What are your picks on that? That's the first time I've heard that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> um, I know they coached together with the, with the Olympic team, so that's you know, that's the chemistry right there. I actually like Nate McMillan. I liked him when he was a player in Seattle, too. And I liked him coach in Portland. Um, he knows defense. He's going to you know make sure they're not just a one a one-trick pony running around and down the court. So, I like that hire. I think, actually, that makes me more confident that Nick Tony's going to run the offense, Nick Miller's going to run the defense, and that's going to be a good fit. So, I like that. I think the Lakers' biggest problem is perimeter defense, and with Nate being a former guard, I think he's probably going to help them, you know, show up a few things, especially with some of the younger players like Meeks and uh, Darius Morris, probably help them out on the perimeter as well, too. So, I think it's a great hire. I like it. Yeah, I kind of, I like that hire too. Actually, uh, you know he is he he's been a pretty he's been a very good coach here uh, here and there. And so I mean I think I think that 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 also do wonders for the Lakers right there. Yeah, definitely. And you know what's funny is that um, it's, it was going to be interesting to see who D'Antoni got to surround him. Mm-hmm. Because you know I think with Kobe and with Dwight Howard. You weren't going to have a team that was going to just give up playing defense because that's what they're, that's what Kobe and Dwight do best. So I think adding somebody who's going to specialize in that, you kind of like ease people's tensions about them. See the Lakers trying to be showtime too with a bunch of older guys. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. I really do. All right. Um, you have anything else for him, Rob? Um, uh, I actually um. You have high expectations. You basically see the Lakers going to the Western Conference Finals, and that might be it. Um, did you see their Tony's high being something that the Lakers thought would be done a long term, other than Phil? Since Phil has so many restrictions now, and then his, his health isn't in the best way. And Phil, I don't want to say he's simple, but sometimes he can, he can fool you. He can take you left sometimes. But you think the Lakers thought about taking the safe route with Mike D'Antoni instead of the more riskier route with Phil? Um, I think you're right. I think that's something about that. Um, I was just talking to somebody on Twitter who said that D'Antoni was safe for hire, and I think um, that makes a lot of sense. I think with Phil Jackson, with all the restrictions he wanted, because remember, there, there's a lot of bad blood in the organization with Phil, so I think Phil was trying to get over and maybe make some last-minute demands to kind of say, look, I got bad knees. I may not be able to go everywhere. Um, I want some ownership, maybe, I've heard. Um, I think Phil kind of wants to get over because he didn't really like the way that he left the first time, and he knows that they don't like him. So he probably was trying to, you know, get as much as he could. But I definitely think Dan is a safer hire. And with a three-year deal, um, that's as long as Steve Nash is there. So he's pretty much going to be the last, maybe the last coach that Steve Nash and Kobe Bryant have. So we'll see long-term what it does. And I think the Tony system, as great as it is, there's like a three-year window for it before it all starts to frustrate people and they don't play defense. So I think it's the right move for the right window that they have. But it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because the Tony Stiles never got in front of the Western Conference Finals. And I'm going to leave you with this one I'm and because we're going to kick off our NFL right after this. But I just want to ask you this. How about our Cowboys? <laughs> ah, yeah, man. That was a great win yesterday. Great, great win yesterday. And I told, and I told somebody on Twitter, I said, it's nice to know that we're going to help send Andy Reid packing after that game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Evan. That was a great interview with us. Of course, we're always going to, we're going to try to get you on the show, you know, sometime soon. I hope so. Uh, whenever, like I said, I just had to get you on there. 
for your thoughts about the Lakers today. So, you know, we're going to try to get you on the show sometime down the road as well. All right, man. Appreciate it. Look forward to doing this morning. All right. Take care. Have a nice day. You too. All right. Let's see. So, yes, we will be, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a commercial break. We will be back once again. We're going to talk a little bit about the NFL. We had the Cowboys, like we, like we mentioned, Cowboys won. We're going to talk a little bit about the tie as well. Uh, this is the Gaffin and Brown Show, and we will be right back in 30 seconds. All right. And we are back once again, the Gaffin and Brown Show. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the NFL week. I think this is week. This is week. This was week ten. Had some pretty interesting games here. Uh, the crazy thing here is the Atlanta Falcons. They got their first loss this season uh, to their biggest rival, the New Orleans Saints. That was a pretty crazy game. What do you have to say about that one, Rob? Oh man, I hate that we didn't have a show last week because I think the Saints. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think the Saints appear in line with them because they own it right up. Um, so, like, the last several years mm-hmm. in uh, history and matchup, um, the Saints have found their stride, found their, they're running the ball. You know, they're finally running the ball along with passing it, something they should have been doing all along. And um, they're just playing better right now. And I think Atlanta was, I mean, it, it, Atlanta has been playing both games for, like, the last several weeks. Uh, and it was bound to catch up with them. I think New Orleans took, took um, advantage of that. And yes, uh, and it's been, and, and to also touch on a little bit about that too, New Orleans has really, has really bounced back from that, from their, from their start. I mean, 0-4 to now 4-5, and and they're pretty much, they're, they're really in the mix now for the, for that playoff spot. And they really play some good, they really played some good football. I mean, I, I saw them making a few stops here that I did not even I did not even see them making against the Falcons. And you know, of course, you know, whenever these two teams play against each other, it's always going to be close. The animosity is always going to be high. What do you think about the Saints' chances now, and probably making it to like the, uh, you know, do you think they still can make it to the playoffs? Uh. I think it's still too early to call. Mathematically, mm-hmm. mathematically they're still in it, but um, yeah, right now it's very early to make a decision on that because we have a lot of elite teams. Uh, let's say, uh, okay, right now in the NFC East, uh, you have Dallas, New York, fighting for that spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say Dallas wins that spot. I see um, New York probably winning more games than New Orleans. Then you have the uh, NFC North with three teams that could probably make the, uh, the playoffs in their division with Minnesota, Green Bay, and Chicago. And then you have the, um, the NFC West where you have the 49ers and you have the Seattle Seahawks who are still in the race and they're over 500. So it's going to be hard for the Saints to climb out of their hole and their schedule they have isn't exactly easy because they still have to play Atlanta again. Uh, Carolina, Tampa again, and the Dallas Cowboys. So, uh, I mean, it's too early to call right now. I'm not going to rule anything out because you never know. Mm-hmm. But they're going to need a lot of help. I'm going to have to win out. Because mm-hmm. I don't think 9 and 7 is going to get it. Oh, no. It's, it, it really is not. Also, another, another good thing here, as we had mentioned before, um, the Cowboys and the Eagles played pretty much in a like in a survival type game, which I I had the feeling here that the loser was more than likely going to be out of the playoffs. And the way to see the Cowboys kind of survive, you know, uh, your thoughts about that game? Well, the Cowboys, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, they got a little a little people holy water on that game. Uh, fumble, you know, putting this extra play, it was a mistake after mistake. 